Um, I'll just point out where Hari Hari is for those of you who are not familiar with it. It's the west coast of the South Island. Actually, the person that um, built Upstage is with us here, Douglas, built it for us. Um, when, um, when Upstage was built, uh, I was on a dial up internet connection. Um, so there were really strict parameters and um, what we wanted it to do. Um, yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to start a little bit. Um, Hari Hari is where I grew up. Um, I did a lot of travelling and then came back there. I, I think of myself as an artist kind of uh, visually foremost, but um, uh, you know, uh, use a lot of digital things. Um, and I wanted to kind of start with a bit of a whakapapa of, I guess um, I'm introducing myself, but also of um, Ada as a network because um, it kind of leads into sort of like how we, you know, how we intersect and the, the kind of coming back to, as we alluded to in our um, little bit that we wrote when we were filling it in Thursday afternoon. So Ada is, um, it was um, born in 2003. Um, it is a network. I initially had global in there, but network always means to me global anyway, because, um, so it started um, as an idea and a list, and the list still exists. And um, uh, I've got a page that I can show you later. You can join it. You become a member of Ada basically by joining the list. Um, it's self-selecting. Uh, it is curated in that um, I get a whole lot of emails um, that I, um, you know, often or primarily a lot of them currently have to delete. But um, this is where it all began as a, a research project. Um, and um, the idea then was that, and particularly for me, um, starting to join this list, I was in Hari Hari, the population, around about 300. I was um, working in um, network performance. I was having to describe everything about what I was doing, and suddenly through Ada I found a, a language and a culture that, um, you know, a whole lot of the stuff that I was doing I didn't have to describe. I probably had to describe why I was doing it, but I didn't have to describe how and things like that. So this was the first symposium that I actually attended from Hari Hari. Um, the next one I was lucky enough to go to and we performed at. Um, and so the thing about Ada is a national network, so we have these kind of uh, rhizomic um, activities around the country, have been doing this for a while now. So, um, and, and always it's about um, actually how the, the people that are coming to the symposium are interacting with each other. So this was a work called RGB where uh, the delegates all went out and, um, and took images of what they thought reflected red, green or blue and it was compiled into a video. It was a really interesting um, outcome. Ada always gathers around food. <laughs> because it is a really nice way of networking and it is a, um, you know, there's something really good about food. Um, a, a lot of, we intersect a lot with other networks. Um, this is Ada at Scans, um, uh, um, Upstage and um, the Avatar Body Collision, which is part of, uh, a collective I'm part of, was, uh, we were resident at Scans and also this is another um, artist that was resident there, Becca Wood, who's an Ada member. Um, so, you know, we're looking at um, place a lot, always, in our work, I guess. Um, and, and again, this, you know, um, conglomeration of people where the, the, the digital is actually, um, I don't know if you could actually see it there. Oh, Ian's on his phone. But, um, you know, this, it's very much around the network, the, um, uh, you know, in the weaving thing, the connection of the people. Uh, so uh, it's aid is about um, you know people coming to New Zealand as well as uh, what New Zealanders are doing and sharing practice. Um, so this is a, just a quick tour around the country and where where Ada has um, been um, here in 2009. We've um, Ada has been trying to have these uh, reasonably annually, um, and in 2008 Ada formed a trust. So. Uh, you know, the, I guess the um, the starting to talk more about you know these um, the art practices and the um, people coming together and really starting to push um, back out and the artists that are in the community and um, you know setting these um, discourses for them, particularly around things like um, the travel and um, for that one in particular. So um, Ada is a website. 
Um, these are some of the projects that Ada's um, been involved in, and um, unfortunately, I don't have a copy of the Ada M Media Reader to show you, which was kind of like this amazing snapshot of um, um, Aotearoa Digital Artists in 2008, which was launched as part of an exhibition at ICEA in Singapore. Um, the touring artists, the Kota Wiki, which um, you know, I'll just point that out because it uh, comes up a little bit later on, was a, a way, um, and it was a piece of software that was a way for people to start to um, self-select into this archive of um, Aotearoa digital art works and artists, and it was um, and it was set up in a kind of template way in order for people to start to um, put their projects in there. Um, Ada takes a kind of a curatorial stance, uh, you know, on um, on that, I guess, in a way. But it was a chance for all these people to go, you know, we're here, this is what we're doing. Uh, Net Walking is a, um, was a project that Ada ran, bringing the artist, UK artist Simon Pope out, and um, he ran masterclasses all around the country, getting um, people within this network and people who came along to the uh, projects to to engage with each other in what he called shoulder to shoulder networking, so actually walking and talking, and so you know the the digital is um, really important, but actually the the um, the network and um, Aotearoa digital artist network is is a really prime driver as well. So um, that a whole lot of the Korowiki came. Um, you know, brought together a whole lot of material which was launched in this new website and also the Ada Trust had come about um, and in 2012 we put together an application for a, a more organisational kind of focus and looked at this, um, you know, the theme of the transitional city and, and the uh, post-earthquake Christchurch, like what, uh, for those of you who are not from New Zealand, um, you um, should be aware that there's a huge amount of art being um, created in, in and around Christchurch and for and by Christchurch people. Um, but you know, ha where where the kind of where the media art or art in public spaces fitted in there, but also thinking about how what was happening there was was kind of um, resonating around the rest of the country as well. Um, so we started off with this round table event that's at the top of the um, physics room. The, the Hood Street Post Office remained standing. It was built in the 30s post the Napier earthquake and so it had a really incredible foundations but um, the rest of High Street is gone and at that stage we were looking into the red zone that was um, it hadn't been opened then and um, we brought together a whole lot of uh, Christchurch artist agent, arts agencies and also the the um, people from the Ada network to start to talk about you know how we approached this, and um, and you know so we were talking about the role and the um, and the importance, and we came up with this um, this the sort of concept of space, network, and memory that um, really fitted a lot of the uh, the things that people were doing and the kind of work that um, we knew of the the um, people that might be involved in this and. Um, you know, because we, as Ada, have symposia in North Island, South Island, um, we headed off down to Dunedin to have our first symposium, and um, we had um, artists creating work specifically for this and um, talking about works that they were creating in Christchurch or elsewhere. Um, and again, we engaged in the Ada practice, which is a lot around this kind of thing third space of a whole lot of people together in a room. Um, we had people creating artworks um, that they made for and um, engaged with from um, each, from outside of New Zealand. And we had a couple of people coming over who, who were using very, um, uh, uh, there was one that has a tool, it's called Long Time No See, and it's kind of, they call it a futuring tool. And it um, has a paper booklet, it's a field guide but it also has an app. Um, we also had an artist that um, did a walk through absent memory. So she actually used the internet to research around Dunedin and, and create this walk that um, people went on and then she talked about it and she um, w wasn't there. She came back this year. Um, 
all of this is incredibly documented, and you know this is where the um, um, some you know this is where the glam sector really uh, comes in. Um, we've been touring an, um, artists as well. So uh, Janine Randerson did a work around Christchurch. Um, she does a work based on air quality data, and she started to try and um, create a work that looked at Christchurch based on this um, idea of hope and responding to images. Um, this is our uh, touring artist this year, and this is a legacy project, which um, uh, those of you who heard James Smithies talking about seismic, he was one of the people that came to the round table. So this is a, um, an auditory, a geolocated auditory work that sits across Christchurch. So you can only actually um, input into it if you are in Christchurch. You can't um, input from outside of Christchurch even if you're a Christchurch person. But you can listen to it outside of Christchurch, and um, the idea is that you um, turn it on and put it in your pocket and walk around, and you en engage in these levels of Christchurch. Um, it's a, a Christchurch as it was, Christchurch in a snapshot in, in present, and also Christchurch in this this um, speculative future. The the hopes of people who are in Christchurch, or um, their responses, or you know the children at the moment. Um, uh, growing up in Christchurch, what what they see for the city, leave, you know, the ability to pe for people to leave messages for themselves or to play games with this idea of putting bits of audio into space. Um, this was our symposium in Auckland this year, so we, we're trying to um, build on this idea of space network and memory. We'd originally um, created it as this three-year project that would go out around New Zealand and come back to Christchurch. Um, this particular project actually ends this year um, uh, beca uh, because we were funded to do it for two years um, and we did the same thing again in Auckland of getting people out into the Auckland space and we started to look at the social spaces and um, so the art and public space was a really focus and uh, for Dunedin and in Auckland we were starting to look more around architectural and social spaces and um, we partnered with uh, Digital Art Live to um, create a work um, that uh, was shown in the Altair Square. Um, Dan Untitled for the Wellingtonians, you might know him, um, and he made a um, robot that, that saw in 3D and um, played with the um, superimposing the images of people in front of it over um, classic kind of, you know, um, uh, horror genre movies and um, and the and Auckland scenery. Uh, this this is Ada currently. Um, you know we are a website. This is the um, <laughs> the Wall of Fame. There's a little snapshot of the book that I don't have to show you here. But um, the the um, these are current Ada trustees and the um, people that have been instrumental in setting it up and have been trustees. And um, there, we wanted to talk to you about when we wrote our presentation idea. Uh, we had um, we didn't know that we were in the current position we're in now with Ada as an organisation. We were we had these two speculative um, projects that we want to do, um, and so I'm going to talk about one a bit, and then um, Birgit's going to take over and talk about the other. Um, Actually, so these are really speculative at the moment, but one of the things for me um, is, you know, I've been interested in um, community, um, how far, how to, you know, community on a really broad sense in terms of coming from a very small and remote community. And, um, and looking at this idea of mesh, I'm really into the idea of nets and weaving and that um, connections are really important in, in good weaving and in good nets. And I'm uh, really interested in the um, New Zealand as part of the wider Pacific. And so um, part of the thing I was interested in doing is taking that idea that, um, you know, the, that, sh that space that's created between artists and scientists and researchers and thinkers when they're, they're put together in an environment. And um, for me, the most exciting environment's the sea. So um, that was uh, one project that is a watch this space. I guess these were the organisations that we were talking to um, about this and with this. And we went um, 
Anish, uh, Vicky Sari from Anish and I presented at the USP at a Talanoa for um, sailing, uh, sustainable sailing technology this year in which we um, started to form some relationships that will hopefully end up being something out of that. Um, and now we are over to Birgit. <laughs> cool, so um, I joined uh, ADA last year during the Dunedin conference and immediately jumped on board because I was so thankful for being a foreigner that has kind of a quirky art practice, kind of in the digital analog programmer designer. And coming from Europe to New Zealand, I felt really kind of welcomed by the presence of such a network that's in one way open to people like me who are looking for kind of critical feedback on what I'm doing, but also just knowing some people that are around that speak more or less the same language or you don't have to have this 10 minute introduction of yeah I'm doing stuff with computers and hardware hacking but what does it mean what does it have to do with art so that's when I jumped on board and we had like we keep presenting lots of the history and there's kind of a rich um, amount of works that has been produced in this particular time and the project we were thinking about how do you, and that's my more or less the glam question here, how can we preserve these works for the future and that's kind of the common question on how to preserve anything and especially digital art and maybe digital art that doesn't even fit into the contemporary frame really well, how do you preserve that for future generation if it maybe becomes more relevant later than now so maybe some of my works maybe now are completely weirdly un understood by the people which had has happened um, but perhaps there's a way of preserving them or archiving them that in maybe 10 or 20 years someone would could look back and understand like the contemporary issues with meter and technology better so yeah with the art base we actually want to reach out not being like this kind of 300 mm. sort of members and member means actually you just subscribe to the mailing list and Vicky accepted you as a non-spam bot. So that is already <laughs> the small threshold of getting into the like, um, yeah, Ada network. So we were thinking we have this amount of people that are kind of willing to open up, share their works, share their ideas and thoughts and discuss and give critical feedback on other people's works. So we have kind of the links and that's how our talk is called, links and cables, bricks and mortar. Because when we were discussing that whole glam sector, we were thinking we are kind of with the art base where we want to actually preserve and present all these works to maybe even international audience. That they're like, yeah, we're both a gallery, we're a library in one sense because we have like lots of written text, lots of discourse also in the mailing list archives, archive and museum. But the only thing we don't have is like a building, like a library with a signage saying Arda network. We're kind of more ephemeral on top of that whole construct. So all the um, conferences that Vicky showed were kind of in collaboration with some sort of either academic institution or with some sort of archive or museum. So we have these connections somehow. We're kind of the ghosts that flow between the buildings. And we think that we have the network that could be kind of creating more discourse in these buildings that seem to maybe gotten a bit empty and lonely since the internet took over and people don't really have to literally walk somewhere to get information. But m I had a generation who didn't use the internet to actually only like reach out and find people and see, okay, there's someone else on the same time on the other side of the planet and I could technically talk to this person. That kind of magic of the internet has kind of faded and we felt that now being more in this fringy art scene, it's more important to have this connection to like local artists and use the internet more to say like, hey, we're having this thing going on and I, I'm able to contact Vicky who is in Nelson, come to Wellington, let's do it. And that's kind of the thing that we're more interested in, like hanging out in the meat space. <laughs> it's like way more productive and way more social space where really things can happen. So I think like one day spending at a symposium is much better than trying to kind of do some Skype things. We have board meetings over Skype and like the technology always takes over <laughs> in the moment. So yeah, that's 
that's our, how we see ourselves fit into the glam sector, but not really being one or the other, and totally not being buildings. Um, I, yeah, we were thinking about how the art base could actually like technologically work and what actually should we present and how, it's again this metadata and taking question and curating content and censoring content, yes, no. So we're thinking that we, we want a certain open space but curated in the other way. So not everyone should kind of declare any piece part of the digital art archive of New Zealand. So there should be some kind of human judgment put on top of that to maybe create collections and ask for certain contributions also from people who might be not in the network yet. And there is, funnily enough, the archive of digital art. I think people from Austria did that and they're also called Ada. So they already have a really nice um, archive of general the digital arts and they have like a, a whole like collection of bibliographies and documentation so it's really broad and huge. But we really want to focus on the more local aspect um, then there's also the Marcel network. I don't know if anyone knows it. It's like um, from a French old academic dude called Don Forrester. And he's really great. He's been thinking about this for, I think, longer than I live. And how to really connect artists on a global level. And he, he found this whole ontology. And I think ANET is also part of it. The organization can be part of it. But also individuals can be part of it. And I've having Skype discussions with him. And he's really interested in using the internet as a non-commercial space. So everyone knows every click you do and every step you take online on the most, like Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, will all be kind of commodified. And he's really one of the persons who has the capability and the kind of academic background to be able to really build a network from scratch that's really for artists and not kind of only on the superficial part, creating some creative discourse and in the back end there's all this ad tracking, surveillance and free speech um, problems. And one other project from like one of my ex-teachers in uh, Rotterdam, it's called Lurk. So they're kind of the sketching the post mailing list scenario. And we have a mailing list, which is great, but probably it's not the, the newest thing that you can sell to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really like email that much. And it's actually kind of even the kind of threshold of having to define a subject to communicate to a crowd seems to be the biggest issue. Because on Facebook, you can just say, lol, and everyone is with you. But you can't really write lol to the mailing list. So you really think, OK, I have to really focus myself and do spell checks twice and three times and really think really hard that I don't come across like more s like too banal or non-academic. So we're thinking that the mailing list is a good thing because it is hosted by the university, not by Facebook. So all the information is sort of safe and non, it's free speech, non-censored, that sort of things. But still, it's not the on top medium at the moment. So um, I also found this um, really interesting article in Rise Home where Mark Zuckerberg says, lol, somehow I became chief archivist for a body of contemporary art criticism. And in a later post, he says, metadata, Pff, I don't care. And he's kind of making fun that there was this post by Michael Hebron that kind of sparked a really critical discussion about the artwork. And I think racism come up and feminism, like all these really issues. And there were more than 500, no, 800 comments, 850 comments. And it got really like deep. On Facebook, and Mark Zuckerberg was kind of making fun of it. So, like, look, even the, the the artists are kind of creating discourse on my stupid website, and I'm not interested in it. So, we're thinking, how can you create an interface that invites people to pop out their opinions and feel kind of invited to just say "lol" or whatever, but still have it in our hands, not in Facebook's hands. So, Dragon Espenscheid, who um, is a partner of Oli Lierlina, and he's also responsible for archiving all the GeoCities or deconstructing the whole GeoCities archive. He calls himself, I think, a digital preservator or archivist or something. But he had the idea of making like a sort of proxy service that you could connect to Facebook. Like use Facebook, the whole interface, make use of it, but connect via proxy so that the proxy actually kind of catches the whole documentation or the whole communication between you and Facebook. And then you have actually have the control to meta tag and however you want to do document and archive this whole discussion. So we think that's great, but I haven't seen any working prototype. It should be a Firefox plugin, but haven't found anything today about it. Um, yeah, so we also have a Facebook page, but as I said, that's not the ideal situation. 
So we were thinking, there are lots of great open source software projects like Koha, is that the one? Because we were last night discussing maybe we're even more, kind of could act the archive more like a library than an archive, because archive sounds like a box that's put on and close the door and that's it. And a library sounds more like people come and engage with it. So maybe we could make a system where artists could propose to put art, their artworks into the system and galleries and curators and museums and whoever could look at the archive and actually rent um, the artworks and display them. And then you could actually use the system to say, okay, Bronwyn's work is in there, but you could say it's on loan by some great library that you found. found. And then you could actually see, can I acquire the artwork and how? So maybe creating more like a dialogue and not like a static thing, like this is an archive done, but kind of more like, how can you get it? And if there's digital work, maybe you could directly download it and the system keeps kind of track. How often has it been downloaded, but not like tracking you and then saying it's people who downloaded this artwork also would like that artwork sort of stuff. So in the end, that's a picture from Ida Symposium in Auckland. And um, the, the note that <laughs> we can put next to that is friendly weirdos. So I think <laughs> <laughs> that just wants to show like that that's kind of a cool picture of the symposium two minutes I'm, I'm, I'm more sort of done I mean that's kind of the the overview of a few people who were trying to geek out on a laptop with a this was a strange workshop someone like the data sets and put them into wallpapers um, yeah but it was fun <laughs> so yeah we're kind of a open I don't know where is the is there a slide with sign up I'm not yet. Yeah, but there's the website and you can click on whatever and then you can sign up to the mailing list. So we are really kind of trying to use the mailing list as the backbone for the system. We're trying to develop in different directions and also being more accessible to the glam sector to see how great people we are and how we could contribute to your culture. <laughs> okay, thanks so much, guys. <laughs> um, I think we've got a couple of minutes, so does anybody have uh, any questions at all for the Ada, Ada Fook? Jay. Uh, so thank you very much for that very interesting uh, journey through Ada and where you guys are. What do you, what do you want in your network that isn't artists? Are you looking for other skill sets, resources? What, what, do, you, what, what, what do you need? Um, well, you know, in our, in our resource, like one of the things we were thinking about was, you know, these like physical sites for having, hosting these kind of events and more, um, you know, the, the effort that goes into a symposia and the gathering together of people for that, like vitally important and uh, all the thinking that goes on before it is, you know, huge and great, but also actually being able to have these kind of faster, smaller, um, you know, more, I guess, exhibition focused but also like you know work, real workshopping hacker space in both um, the Dunedin and the um, Auckland one we had uh, these um, maker sessions skill shares um, and you know that that kind of aspect like, we have really resisted the bricks and mortar having a, a place where we exist because it you know um, things automatically start to centralize north and, and really, um, you know, just to, to keep that real national global network. Um, but, you know, um, money um, <laughs> is another good one. Affiliate programs, we do have a really, um, a really exciting um, and broad range of people who are involved in ADA. So people that are, you know, within institutions like, you know, actually the, the, the kind of the ADA-ness <laughs> for want of other way to describe it, you know, being able to take that out. And actually um, within institutions as well, just other ways to, you know, to, I guess, think from different perspectives, you know, letting go of institutional structures and plugging in a few kind of friendly weirdos and seeing what will come out of out of these institutions, you know. Like, um, bro I, in your slide the other night where you said when you let things go, strange things happen, good things happen, Surprising. Surprising. surprisingly good strange things can happen, but you know, the, the thing of, you know, with, because there's all these amazing skill sets in the room here, but also there, you know, um, I guess sometimes a different approach as well. 
Um, yeah, but money, <laughs> about, you know, infrastructure a little bit. I think bit. infrastructure yeah. is like, yeah. yeah, not so much money. No, in, not in, so in much it, money. I'm, cash, I'm kind of joking. I'm on the... <laughs> Yeah, and uh, uh, at this point, I'd like to say that we um, have been massively supported by CNZ and and institutions who have hosted us and galleries who have hosted us. So we are, you know, we are really lucky in that respect. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we might wrap it up because afternoon tea time. But Yay. thanks so much for coming, everyone, Thank and <laughs> thank you for our presenters. <laughs>